Hi, neighbor. I'm Connor Gant, your new host for this season. I'm ecstatic to be here with you as we learn more about the people and places that make this university and area so special. On this episode, I'll be learning to knit, or at least try to. The singers from the talented Appalachian Corral will be joining us to share more about their fun group. And later, I'll find out how playing basketball can help your community. I hope you'll join me as we say, hi, neighbor. For our Club of the Week segment, Vice President of the Appalachian Knitters and Crocheters Club, Abby Bonavac, is here to talk to us and teach me, maybe, how to knit. Abby, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm doing well. So, Abby, tell us what the Appalachian Knitters and Crocheters Club does. Okay, well, we meet about once a week, and we all come together, and we just knit and crochet. We watch movies, we eat. It's all about gossiping and gabbing, really. That's awesome. That sounds like a good time. Yeah. So, how did you get involved? knitting? Um, I had an internship over the summer mm -hmm. and it was just me in Asheville so I learned to knit to do something and it's stuck with me ever since. That's really cool so we were talking before and you told me there's a difference between knitting and crocheting. Yes. A lot definitely. of people get that wrong. What's that? Well knitting is with two needles and crocheting is actually with one hook. Uh -huh, okay. And the sizes do vary for all knitting and crocheting hooks but the difference is, is with one hook, you're just knitting one row, or crocheting, sorry, <laughs> one row completely. Whereas knitting, you'll have many rows. And there's different types of knitting needles compared to crochet hooks. There's okay. rounded, which you can knit a blanket with. There's normal, which is just two knitting needles. And there's also the rounded and very tiny to knit socks with. Oh, so. I'm sure that comes in handy. It does. So. I've been told that you're going to try to teach me how to knit today. Yes. I've never done this before, so we'll see how this goes. So what do we need to do to get started? Okay. Well, to get started, I've already cast it on for you because okay. that's the hardest part of knitting. Perfect. I'm glad we got that out of the way. Yes. <laughs> that's what turns people off from knitting. <laughs> so what you're going to do is you're going to take your needles like so, and you're going to have one row, one stitch right here. And you're going to take your needle and go underneath. You're going to take the ball of yarn, go over, pull it through to make a T. Okay. Come out, keep them parallel, and then you're actually going to slide it off of your left needle. That is one stitch. Okay. Are you ready to try? We'll give it a shot. Let's see how All this right. goes. All right. Can't get that okay, there. Yeah, you're good. Okay. So. To I can do it with, with you. Okay. So you go underneath in the back. Right. Under the back. Yeah, okay. yeah. There you go. And then you're okay. going to take your yarn. Bring it. And loop it over. Over the top? Yes. Okay, like that? Yes. And Perfect. then you're going to pull it through like that and make a T. Okay, so I think I'm already stuck. <laughs> yes. <Sharper>. Okay. <laughs> so we'll take this off. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, so. I have made a you, mess for sure. Yes, you actually took off oh. the thing. There we go. Okay, so perfect. Now under. Under. Loop. Loop. Pull. And out. Oh, okay. Perfect. So, so that stays like that? Mm -hmm. Yep. And awesome. then you'll actually end up transferring all of that over onto this needle. And oh, that's key. cool. So we'll try to knit here. Yes. Um, so <laughs> what's the coolest thing you've knitted so far? Um, the coolest thing I would say is um, I'm really new into this still, so I knit yeah. scarves still. Um, I've done maybe one or two hat dish right. towels, but. Yeah, we talked about the dish towels. That sounds yes. pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So I'm trying to knit a blanket now. This will probably take me about six to eight months. Wow. To finish, yes. Now, how much yarn is that? Um, it depends. I'm going for 1,500 yards. Wow, that's so a lot. It's a lot that's, of yarn, yeah. That's a lot As of you yarn. can tell, this is about 600. Oh, yarn. okay. So a couple of those, and that'll have a blanket. Yes. Yes, awesome. and of course it's Carolina Panther colors. Absolutely, you know. keep pounding, exactly. even in the off season. <laughs> yes. So Abby, so for anyone who's interested in joining the Knitters and Crocheters Club, yes. how can they join? Um, what you can do is you can go on AppSync okay. and join through the club website there, or you can just show up on Mondays at 7.30 in the Watauga River Room. Okay. And we're there every Monday, so. Hang out, have a good time, exactly, and make yeah. an awesome blanket. Yes. That's awesome. Well, Abby, thanks for coming. 
Thank you for coming to show me our craft and we'll have more high neighbor for you coming up after the break. Moving from knitting to sports, my next guest is going to tell us what basketballs and tin cans have in common. Elena, thanks for joining us today. Uh, Elena is a member of Alpha Omicron Pi who is hoping, hosting a basketball tournament. But this isn't just any basketball tournament. Tell us how this one's different. Uh, this is, it's called Can Slam. It's a three on three basketball tournament. All you need is three cans per player per team. Um, all of our can donations are going to the Hunger and Health Coalition. That's really exciting. So is this like, just gonna be like a quick basketball game? like? Uh, we're hoping to have a whole bracket. Um, yeah. It lasts a few hours. We're really excited. Uh, we've gotten a lot of teams to sign up, and years, there's still time to sign up. You have until next Friday. Uh, you can come to the SRC at the event, and we can sign you up there. That's exciting. So how many years have you guys been doing CanSlam? This is our second year, um, and we are, have been partnered with Fiji, so Phi Gamma Delta has helped us through those two years. That's very cool. So how many cans did you guys uh, collect last year? Uh, I'm not a lot. A, lot, a yeah. lot. Yeah, I'm not sure of the exact number, but a lot has been. Do you have like any goals for this year? Of how many you want to try to get? Uh, as many as possible. The person, the team who brings the most cans, so more than nine, hopefully, uh, will win a $15 gift card to Comeback Shack. Oh, there you go. That's the perfect, uh, perfect trophy right there. Right there. Everybody yeah. loves some Comeback Shack. <laughs> so, um, how how many teams are you guys hoping to get? Uh, as many as possible. I think we have upwards of 10 that signed up right now, but there's still time to sign up, so we well, welcome really everyone. Cool. Absolutely. Greek philanthropy is a big thing on this campus, and Can Slam surely sounds like it's going to be a big success this mm -hmm. year. Awesome. Well, that sounds amazing. Elena Nowak, thank you for joining us. Um, if you want to sign up for Can Slam 2017, you can register on the Facebook page Can Slam 2017 or see a member of Phi Gamma Delta or Alpha Omicron Pi. The game is this Friday at 4 p.m. in. The SRC. In the SRC. Perfect location. Thank you so much, Elena, for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. And we'll have me. more High Neighbor after the break. Welcome back, Neighbor. With me now is Dr. Linda Larson and Josh and Brady, members, and Dr. Larson is the director of the Appalachian Corral. Guys, thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Of course. Dr. Larson, so what is the Appalachian Corral all about? Well, this is a choir that's been in existence for 41 seasons now, and it includes students and community members who are, some of whom are part of the Appalachian State community, as in faculty or uh, staff or even and administrators, and some who are independently members of the high country community. Right. And so we are all about coming together once a week and putting together the masterworks of the choral literature. Absolutely, that sounds fantastic. So Josh and Brady, what's it like being in the corral? Um, well, I mean, I definitely like it because I used to be in like high school choirs where it was all teenagers and we all had that, that sound. But now I get to sing alongside people who are a lot more experienced, who have a lot more age to their voice and it's, it's nice meeting new people that you wouldn't meet anywhere else. Absolutely. So as students, does this like fit into your schedule pretty easily? I know students have a very rigorous schedule sometimes. Yeah, it's nice to have a nighttime class. It's like last semester I had four instrument lessons every week. So um, it was just an experience trying to fit in the extra ensemble work required to take. It's just a nice time slot. Yeah, very it cool. definitely, it definitely, is very nice to have it at the beginning of the week, mm. at night, where it's away from everything else so I can get all my other classes out of the way and not have to stress about it. That is very nice. Mm -hmm. Now, these are both music students. Absolutely. So they have the, the music curriculum to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it is a little less time than some of the other ensembles. But we also right. often have students from across campus. We've mm -hmm. had chemistry majors, engineering majors, all sorts of people. That's incredible. So, and I know. Being in the music school is a very time-consuming thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Larson, how mm -hmm. long have you been leading chorales or choral groups? Well, I've been, I think this is my fifth season with the choral, something like that. <laughs> um, and I had training as a choral conductor in graduate school mm -hmm. uh, and did some of that on and off and combined that with uh, performing as a, as a solo singer right. as well. And you told me you did some opera that I is. used to do quite a bit of opera and other kinds of classical 
performing. That is definitely something I cannot handle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now, Dr. Larson, we were talking earlier and you said that you can basically have anyone from any walk across campus in the community. You mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. uh, if someone's interested, what can they do to join? Well, we, um, we do one concert per semester, so we ask people to start at the beginning of the semester. Right. Um, and we rehearse once a week, Monday nights. They can contact me. Uh, they can go to the music school website. Uh, we are always looking for people. And we're not looking for a particular level. We want people who feel that they have a little bit of confidence to bring something. But one of the wonderful things about having a choir of 80 to 100 people is that no one person is responsible for making it beautiful. Right. We're all responsible for bringing whatever we have to offer. These two are terrific singers, but not everybody in there has done a lot of singing, mm. and they still help make it happen. I might have to think about joining them. I'm we'd a love, shower singer, but we'd <laughs> love group, to we'll have see. you. Now, Josh and Brady, what is y'all's favorite part about being in the corral? Um, well, it's nice to be able to interact with some of the community. Um, I'm always cooped up in the music building, either practicing or taking, you know, dozens of things. Uh, so it's just nice. I never get to get out. We have a, you know, huge amount of community members in here. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah, I think that that is a big thing for me too. I. Uh, I, one thing I love about any choir is the, the community that you form with mm -hmm. it. And with this, we get to meet people that, like, like I said, we would never be able to meet anywhere else. Um, so it's really nice to meet new people and to sing some of the beautiful things that we get to, we get to sing. And um, I just love putting on concerts at the end of the semester. So, mm -hmm. Well, that is very cool. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Dr. Larson, it's been a pleasure to have you. And hopefully later on we can come maybe see a performance and get some video and show it to our viewers. That would be fantastic. We'd like that a lot. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. That's all the High Neighbor we have for this week. I'm Connor Gant, and we'll see you later.